Welcome to my Texas workshop. I'm Randy Lammers. I'm Aaron Keevan. This is Worth Knowing. Where do you find the best collection of fastener assembly education? We have created close to 30 episodes of informative and entertaining shows that are all worth knowing. And it all starts with Bolted Joint 101. So let's do this. So we have external forces. I have understood my external forces and then I grab this. What is that, Aaron? I'm pretty sure that's a paper clip, Randy. Well, it's a paper clip, but it's also a fastener. And so if I put that paper clip or put that fastener on there, what does that paper clip do? Holds two pieces of paper together, Randy. It creates a clamp load. <laughs> Assembling fasteners, we use torque. What torque should I use? Torque, torque. The torque, a lot of torque. Torque is primarily a rotational force to overcome friction. Clamp load is achieved by controlling friction. And those are some great episodes to film. Lots of demos, lots of fun. So we've covered metal and plastic screws for assemblies. Yes. We've covered self-drilling screws, mm -hmm. and we've even covered the new Taptite Pro. Strip out normal, everyday mode of thread rolling screws, Taptite Pro. That's right. Full tensile break, equivalent to 10.9, which is also, for our American friends, equivalent to grade eight, and it broke. That's right. Failure wow. mode of fastener fracture. That's what we're looking for. Okay, that, Don, is a game changer. That's right. A big thank you to Ed Hebert and Don Falsman from Rimic. Excellent new technology. Yeah, they did such a great job. Now remember, with plastics, mm -hmm. we didn't talk about this again, you have to make sure you the correct screw for the right material. Oh my gosh, that's so very important. And minimize your torque, not maximize. And that's all based on your flexorial modulus. Flexural modulus. Flexural modulus. It took me a while to figure how to say that. It is lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> we also did a series of shows on fastener finishes, including mechanical and hot dip galvanizing, zinc flake coating. Oh, who can forget the infamous salad spinner? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, really, Randy? A salad spinner? Sure, dip and spin. Get that on there, and you ready? What are you moving away for? Okay, and we spin it. Now, in reality, it tilts, and it spins, and it tilts, and it spins. Hey, dip and spin, it worked. <laughs> it's true, it did work. <laughs> then, we also did electroplating of a bolt right here in the shop. How cool was that? You So you have a, a negative charged uh, on the on the steel, you have a positive charge on the zinc anodes, and it's a galvanic action. Sure. So the uh, the negative charge then attacks the the zinc uh, positive charge, and lets go that then they let go of the zinc. It degrades that. Let's go of the zinc into the aqua solution, and then the positive and negatives attract and gets deposited onto the steel. That's electroplating, kind of in a nutshell. Speaking of electroplating and a subject I get a little emotional about, hydrogen embrittlement. Yeah, we know we're not going to electroplate anything with 39 HRC or above. The risk just is not worth the reward. Now, it was a real pleasure to have Luke Reed from Heiko come onto the show and show us all about wedge lock washers. That was cool. Okay, we've, we've taken the draw pin out, and Luke, look at what happens here. So, to put it in my Uncle Mo's terms, I've wallered out the hole. Luke, this is fantastic. That large OD covered up my wallered out hole, and this looks like it's really snug and tight. It's gonna stay together? It will stay together. The tension-based wedge lock washer mm -hmm. is what's gonna be the answer to your problem, and you, you can drive on with confidence. How's that tractor holding up, Randy? Outstanding. I've been mowing for several months now with no concerns. We also want to give a thank you to Scott Wickham and Brad Gallagher from ND Industries for teaching us about user-applied and pre-applied locking adhesives. Yeah, that's right. They covered liquid thread lockers and pre-applied epoxies. Very informative episode. 
And then there's Mr. Chris Tribble from Worth Construction Services. Mm -hmm. We can't thank him enough for sharing his knowledge on structural bolting. Yeah, a whole full series on just structural bolting, a lot of it covered by the RCSC, which is amazing information. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, another structural episode we did with applied bolting, Chris Kervin came on the show, right. taught us all about direct tension indicators, which are not washers, Randy. Okay. <laughs> so they're strong, and when the compression becomes so great from tightening a bolt and the joints squeeze together, these bumps will flatten out. And when they flatten out, it lets us know that bolts have been tightened. All right, Aaron, placing a DTI, which is a load cell, mm -hmm. in the assembly gives you accurate assembly every single time. One of the best methods of doing structural bolting. I completely agree. Then we had Rob Westover, mm -hmm. who came in and showed us DTIs being used in flange bolting. That's revolutionary, Randy. Nobody else is doing this right now, and they are leading the market in that. Right, so any bolt circle pattern, think of this technology. Yeah, it's incredible technology. It is. And another innovative technology, mm. the B&M trim nut. Thank you to Michael McFadden from B&M for coming on the show and telling us all about this for the, our industry here in America. How amazing was that? Revolutionary technology. Keith Barrett from Worth Construction Services came to the Texas Workshop and demonstrated expansion anchors, a couple of really good episodes on putting bolting into cured concrete. So Randy, how's the Jeep top doing? No concerns. Thank you for helping us install those rivet nuts to hold that top down. My wife can go 80 miles an hour down the highways now with no concerns. No more holding on, right? No more holding it was on. a real world application. How awesome was that to actually? Yes, it was. A specialty show was additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing. Concept to production in hours rather than weeks or even months. A big thank you to Carter Rhodes and Jacob Ayers from Worth Additive Group for showing us this rapidly growing technology. Roadshow. Oh man, it was a huge undertaking. Yes. But what an amazing opportunity to work with Russell Watts from Worth Construction Services and visit that Greensboro, North Carolina facility and learn all about anchor bolts. It was. Aaron, what a trip this entire project has been. Yeah, it certainly has. And one person that's an ongoing integral part of the show was Mo. You have to watch episode one to learn why my Uncle Mo is the third host of this show. We have presented a tremendous amount of knowledge on fastener assembly. Now go build your education with Worth Knowing.